This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Microsoft released the Surface Laptop Studio last fall, and it was one of my favorite new devices of last year. Today, I'm checking in, I'm seeing if that still holds up six months later. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and I don't often go back and revisit a piece of tech after I've reviewed it. Usually something comes in and play with it for a week or two. I share my opinions here, and then I move on because something else has come in that I have to test. The Surface Studio laptop is different because I really, really liked it, and I've continued to use it after all of these months. And by and large, the last six months, I would say this has held up well. I still really like it, but my opinion on one or two things has changed. So here is the too long, didn't read version of my original review. I have been looking for the ultimate Windows drawing laptop and every single one of them that I had tried just fell a little bit short. And this one, this one finally checked almost all of the boxes. It was powerful enough to handle any drawing app that I'd throw at it with ease. Plus some other things like light to medium video editing. Also a good pen. Yes, the Surface Pen is good now. This is also a screen that can fold down. You can comfortably draw on this like a tablet. So it's very similar to like a 360 degree laptop. And the Surface Studio laptop does all of these things without any caveats, at least not any major caveats. Now, during that review, I did have one major regret. And that is, is that I ended up buying the base model, the cheapest one you could get for review purposes. And I wish if I had to do it again, I would end up getting something a little bit higher up, something with more storage. At the time, it was about $1,600 for that. Nowadays, you can find this like on Amazon for a little bit cheaper, also on the Microsoft Store for a little bit less. That configuration comes with 16 gigs of RAM, which is plenty for what I'm doing, and 256 gigabytes of storage, which is plenty for a review unit for me to be testing it out. But that's just really not enough storage, especially when we're talking about video editing. The other thing that's a little bit weird about the Surface Laptop Studio in terms of how it is priced is that the configurations go up and it's not quite as granular as say configuring many laptops out there like an HP or a Mac where you can say I just want to get more RAM on this or I just want to get more storage on this instead the configuration that would get me say a terabyte of storage which is what I would want to get in any laptop I'm using for video that puppy would cost me two thousand and five hundred dollars so that's eight hundred nine hundred more than what I paid just for more storage you're getting more with that. You're getting 32 gigabytes of RAM. You're getting a faster processor. You're also getting like a GeForce GPU. That's probably where most of that cost is going. So you are getting more, even though I don't need all of those things. I only need the storage, the configuration of these does get really expensive really quickly because of the way they're configured. So even though I'm not using this laptop for video editing, I am using it at every chance I get. Many of you keen eyed viewers have noticed that down in the comments, you have said, oh, you pulled out the Surface Studio for this video because I like drawing on it. So if I have the chance to use any kind of Windows app or if I wanna test something out for a video, I'm often pulling out that one to test it on. Of course, it's good for sketching. I played with Blender a little bit, not using it quite as much for that, just because I've gotten used to using the Mac trackpad in Blender, it works really well. I like uh, the mouse a little bit better when I'm using a Windows computer and I'm using Blender and I'm just too lazy to find an adapter and a mouse to connect to the whole thing. So I think the big question is, why do I keep coming back to it? Why do I like it? Well, I think the answer's kind of weird, but I think this thing is just so cool. I know, that's a dumb reason to like a computer, but welcome to my channel. I like really simple and elegant designs, and I think this checks that box really well. It has a very similar build quality to what you might expect from a Mac, which is I wouldn't say it's rare in Windows computers. A lot of Windows laptops have really, you know, upped their game lately, but this one I think is really top notch. Now, one of the big things that I have changed my mind about since the review and using this long term are the angles that I use it at. So of course the screen flips around or flips down. So you can turn this into a tablet. There are actually three pre-configured angles, right? That first one is your standard laptop angle, looks very normal. The second one is like this pull down, you know, kind of display mode. I've never actually used that for anything other than photographing this thing. And then of course the third one is it's lying almost flat 
on the ground for you to draw on. Now the problem here is flat is not really a good drawing angle. I end up propping it up, you know, on a stand or on my lap when I want to use it. And this isn't a problem like specific to this computer. This is a problem with any 360 degree laptop. You just, it doesn't stay up at a nice 15 to 20 degree angle really well. So yeah, I think that is the one thing I would love to see them solve. I don't know if they can, but find a way to get this hinge to rest at that 15 to 20 degree degree angle. I think that would be absolutely perfect. Also, just to make it harder, it has to hold or support the weight of my hand while I'm drawing on it at the same time. So I don't know if that's going to happen. The other weird thing about the design that everybody points out, and I noticed right away when they revealed this thing, is the platter like feel to the base, it's weird. There's nothing else out there like this. And in photos and in videos, yeah, it, it does look weird, but in person, I think it looks way better. The main reason why is it, it sits on your desk and when it's sitting on your desk, what ends up happening is it's sitting on top of that platter part so you don't see it. So the laptop ends up looking a lot slimmer and a lot more elegant than it really is. The only time you see it is when you close it up and, and carry it around and that sort of thing. Of course, the biggest improvement here to this laptop laptop is that new Surface Pen Slim. Hallelujah, they improved the pen. But before I dive too deep into the pen, I do want to shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. You probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business. But it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content, videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all of this to fit your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business to find the perfect starting place. And see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from. And analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So this is the Surface Slim Pen 2. This was a game changer for me. The old pen was just too wiggly. And by wiggly, I mean the lines were too wiggly and too jittery. And sometimes the pen, it was so inconsistent. It would just do weird things. It drove me nuts. So six months of using this new pen, and I still think it's fantastic. I'm still not finding weird things. And that is fantastic. That's great. When I go looking for pen wobble, like when I test this out and that sort of thing, I can definitely find it. But day-to-day sketch and drawing and that sort of thing, I don't notice it at all. And that's that's what I'm looking for. Also with this pen, they got away from the little rubbery tip that the old pen had. Now, what that ends up doing on a glass screen like this is that rubber tip provides some resistance. So you, it's kind of like dragging an eraser across a piece of paper. Since that eraser is soft, it kind of slows down. And that's exactly what it does on the glass screen. So you are losing that resistance and the plastic tip is going to be smoother on the screen. But to make up for that, it's a wider tip. So the surface area that is hitting the screen is thicker. And what that ends up doing is it, it kind of makes up for some of that control that you're losing. It's kind of hard to describe, but it works out okay. Some people aren't gonna like it. I know I often talk about putting screen protectors on things to give me a little bit of grip. I haven't done that here, but it hasn't bothered me too much either. Now the older pens use batteries that you needed to replace every few months or every year or so. The new pen, totally rechargeable. So it just slaps, and I mean slaps, along the bottom. It fits magnetically, and that connection, boy, is strong. The pen is a weird shape. I've totally gotten used to it. It doesn't bother me at all, but I've seen comments from people who have talked about either using this on the Surface Pro 8 or using this on the Surface Laptop Studio who have said, you know, I'm not too sure about this. Uh, at least that was their initial impression. I don't know if people have gotten used to it. If you have, let me know down in the comments, or if you just absolutely hated it and returned it, let me know that too. For me, this wasn't really a problem, but that is definitely something you should be aware of, that weird shape might bother you for long extended periods of time. The pen also has haptic feedback. I almost forgot to include this in this video because I turned it off months ago. What that means is every time you draw a line or the pen like does little taps on the screen, the, it, the pen is gonna shake a little bit. Now this isn't supported in every single app, which is part of the reason I turned it off. In my review, initially I said, 
hey, it comes on a little strong. It, it's a it's a cool feature that Microsoft included. And so they were like, hey, let's turn up those haptics. So it really shakes and you really notice it. And there is a way to go in there and change that setting, tweak it a little bit so it's not as intense. There are some things here I, I just want to hit on that I still love after all this time, other than the pen. First up, it's a trackpad. This is the most Apple-like trackpad I've ever used on a Windows machine. That's, that's probably my one biggest beef with most Windows products that I use, or most Windows laptops that I use, is the trackpad just feels kind of cheap and plasticky. This one does not. This one feels really good. The other thing that's totally spoiled me are the fans in this thing. They are silent unless this thing really kicks into overdrive. And even then they're not that loud. So I've ended up talking about pretty much all of the things that I love about this laptop. I mean, it's, it's my favorite windows laptop for a reason, right? I, I really like it, but there's got to be some cons and, and there's a couple here and they're more trade-offs than cons. Like the first one is the weight. Many two and ones are like super light. I mentioned that Galaxy Book 2 just a minute ago, but of course there's a trade-off there. You're not going to get a graphics card in this. I mean, the unit I reviewed, I didn't get a graphics card in either, but the performance in general isn't going to be as good in a smaller form factor as it is in a larger one that can vent out some of that hot air and pump in more power, right? I also mentioned that you can feel that hot air. So when you're using it in tablet mode, because it's heavy, because you're holding it on your lap or, or holding it around, it's not the best thing to use for that. It's really more of a desk based computer. And also the edges are pretty hard. So holding that in your hands for long periods of time, it's just not comfortable because the edges are just, there's there's a lot of them <laughs> and they dig into your hands a little bit. And then the other con would be battery life. And again, this is a trade-off. When you have a really lightweight laptop that isn't doing as much, the battery is gonna last a lot longer. This has 120 Hertz refresh rate on the screen. That's something I probably should have mentioned. It's a beautiful screen. But of course, when you have a high density screen and it's running at a higher refresh rate, um, it's a variable refresh rate, but still it's running at that higher refresh rate. That's gonna pull on the battery more. That gal Galaxy Book, I was getting about five hours out of. This thing, I get like two to three hours out of it. So that is the Surface Laptop Studio. After six months, I am still impressed with it and I'm still loving it. What do you guys think? Have you tried this thing? Are you interested in this thing? Does it work for you? Does it not? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.